program is dedicated to the memory of Sir Horace Kubiduk. Sono lieto di poter rievocare in poche parole le esperienze delle prime trasmissioni radiotelegrafiche a grandi distanze da me felicemente eseguite attraverso l'oceano atlantico il 12 dicembre 1901. Holy snapping bra straps. It's a podcast. <laughs> Republic of Avalon Radio. It's zero hours, Avalon Standard Time. Uh, to the gods in the sky, there's one thing you can do. You can send us some sun and we'll play you this tune. Because sitting in a room, lying down with a scoop and the sun shines through our... Oh, it's nice like these that'll make us happy. Like a puppy getting lucky with a lassie. Oh, well, that's all free hours passing by with that beat. Singing days like these, kicking back, just doing what we do. Whoa, it's nice like these that'll make us happy. Like a puppy getting Myself frantic to the moon and back. Now it's evening and the sausages are flying out back. I write my run for this track as the sky fed to black. Now I remember earlier in the day as I was swimming through the bay. A bass player I know swam my way. Said good day. Hey, you wanna go see some reggae? Starts at eight and plays through the sunrise the next day. So nine o'clock sees me heading out towards the tabernacle. I call reggae beat, bring me fit out of their shackles. I call reggae DJ, I salute you. Crackle, 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 crackle of the vinyl. Now I'm high, now a spectacular night ahead. I met a Mexican called one. Yeah. And bring a bottle of rum. Can't afford it, but I bought it. <laughs> and then I sang it. It's nice like these when you know that you're right, life. Nights like these when you know that you got five. Nights like these when you don't have to try. Fall in love and kiss a smile from every girl walking by. I'm alive, I'm alive, I'm alive, I'm alive. And my eyes wanna cry, cause the night and the sky is so high. And my life is sublime, and it's mine, and it's time. It's now time. Whoa, it's nice like these when you know that you're right, life. Nights like these when you know that you got five. Nights like these when you're laughing. Love I'm giving. Oh, it's nights like these that'll make us happy. Like a puppy getting lucky with a lassie. Oh, that's all free hours passing by with that beat. Singing days like these, kicking back, just doing what we do. Whoa. Empire from Australia. You're listening to WFMU in Orange, New Jersey. Yes. And my name is uh, Winston Horowitz. My name is Lori Oberhertz. Lori, <laughs> Lori Oberhertz. 
<laughs> okay. Uh, seriously, folks, this is Republic of Avalon Radio. Don't uh, don't change that dial. Whatever dial I'm talking about. Do you have a dial, you listener? Do you ha- do you actually have a dial, or do we not have dials anymore? I don't know. There aren't many dials left. We're we're getting very down on the dials, aren't we? Mm-hmm. So anyway, that was the Cat Empire from Australia. Uh, they sent us a little press package. They're going to be doing some touring around Canada. Are they doing any any uh, dates in America? Um, no. Well, they, maybe they are. It doesn't say here, though. This is strictly for Canada. We are going... Lillian is going to tell you about their tour. Um, they're from Australia, and they're touring around Canada this summer. So, for you Canadian listeners if, who enjoyed that first song, which was uh, Days Like These... Uh, well, the... It, the name of the band again is the Cat Empire, and they're from Melbourne, Australia. Um, and I'll just lovely place, right, right in <laughs> in the middle, right, right down on the bottom. If you look at Australia, it's kind of down at the bottom and kind of in the middle, sort of uh, in there, um, south coast, I guess you would say. Correct. Yeah, I think so. All right. Uh, anyway, they're uh, they're doing quite well in Australia. Their uh, latest CD, which. Uh, that, that last track that you heard is from uh, had a number one hit in Australia, and Ooh. the album is give, uh, has earned the band double platinum status, which is pretty cool. Very nice. Yeah. Not just one platinum thing, but two platinum things. Yeah, that's cool. yeah. I think one of my records has got, uh, just went wood. <laughs> and the average press board actually. <laughs> The average age in the band is twenty three years. So does that group. does that mean like one of them is a year and a half old and and uh, somebody else in the band is like ninety seven or something? Uh, could be. You never know. You know. <laughs> the average age in the band. Okay, so we get the general idea. They're they're uh, they're a youthful lot. Yes, and uh, they did. Uh, some of their tracks were actually recorded in Havana by uh, Havana. Havana, yes. Okay. By producer Jerry Boys who produced the Buena Vista Social Club. Good on him. Yeah, so I think that those nice horns that you were hearing were, it's my guess anyway, that they were probably recorded there. What do you think? I think that would be a good chance. There's nice horn playing there. Either that or they're following some sort of uh, U.S. government uh, propaganda spin, sort of uh, inaccurate uh, saying something to give you the idea of something, but actually the, 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 the truth is nowhere near it. And I doubt they're doing that. <laughs> and <laughs> Iman is getting political. <laughs> yes, don't worry, folks. I'll keep him at bay. Yes, which and which bay? <laughs> Conception Bay. Conception Bay. All right. <laughs> the Placentia Bay. Yes, yes. All right. Any bay will do. We have yes, many bays with different kind of bizarre names. We have bays and tickles too. Bays and tickles <laughs> and coves and inlets yes. and harbors mm-hmm. and noses and arms Jerry's nose. and all them things. And tickle harbor. Norman's arm. Heart's content. Betty's belly button. Heart's delight. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, all kinds of interesting place names. In we used to have a place called Dildo. We did. What happened to that? They changed the name. What's it called now? It's called uh, Gay Side, isn't it? No. No, I'm sorry. No. We do have a place called Gay Side. No, we had a place. We had a place called Gay Side, and they changed it to Baytona. Right. Yeah. Now, folks, come on, Baytona. And what did they change Dildo to? Or is it still Dildo? It's still Dildo. Oh, okay, that's cool. I'm glad. They changed Hibbs Hole <laughs> <laughs> to Hibbs Cove. <laughs> yes. They didn't. They did. Okay. Yes. How did we get off on that? <laughs> <laughs> We've gone right from, from, from Melbourne to <laughs> Hibbs Hole. It's a wicked downward spiral we're on here at the Roar, folks. Okay, let's get on with the program. Let's get with the program. Okay, so these guys have uh, apparently taken a, a shining to Canada. Taken. Taken a shining. Taken, not taking. Take, did I say taking? You said taking, yes. Oh yes, taking. We'll leave that in. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. All right. 
they they likes Canada. They man. likes Canada, yeah. So they decided to do a tour here, and they actually signed with this record company here. I guess it's called Indica Records from okay. Montreal. Uh huh. So I guess they're doing all their promo and. Ça va Montréal. Yeah. So I'm going to read out the dates where they're going to be playing in case any of our listeners want to be in the area. If you're in Canada and you would like to perhaps go and see this band that you just heard performing that song days like these and we think they rock by the way we'd love to be able to go see them live I bet you they'd be a very very good live band oh I bet uh, Lillian is going to speak very get very close and speak directly into the microphone and read you uh, where you can see the Cat Empire I'm so close to the microphone that my nose is touching the uh... <laughs> that's good <laughs> is that good? that works ça okay. marche that's a good, good uh, position for me to be in I guess. it's good okay so June 20th in Winnipeg at the Pyramid Cabaret. Ding. June 21st, Calgary at the Warehouse. Ding. June 23rd in Victoria at Jazz Fest International. Ding. June 24th in Vancouver at the Commodore Ballroom. Ding, ding. June 26th in Whistler at Garibaldi Lift Company. Ding. June 30th in Toronto. Toronto. At Mod Theatre Club. At Toronto. In Toronto. Toronto, eh? And and where, where, where in Toronto? The Mod Theatre Club. The Mod Theatre Club? As in, they're not rockers, they're mods? Y- yeah. Okay. Yeah. As in, sort of modern. Yeah. Not as in, Mrs. with the woolly head that used to be on All in the Family. <laughs> oh, exactly. <laughs> okay. Not Mod Theatre Club. Okay. And on Canada Day, Canada Day, on July 1st, at the Montreal Jazz Fest. Yes. At the Metropolis. And boy, I tell you, you guys get a chance to see the Montreal Jazz Festival, or take it in, or drink it in, or whatever one does with the Montreal Jazz Festival. Uh, Don't miss out on the opportunity, because not only do you get to see a lot of good jazz, or hear a lot of good jazz from all over the place, you get to hear music from all parts, all four corners of the world, Lots of good Latin stuff and uh, reggae and North African stuff. All kinds of stuff. The Montreal Jazz Festival is not just uh, trios and quartets in uh, little cabarets, uh, which that's all wonderful, uh, but all kinds of stuff at the Montreal Jazz Festival. Uh, Isn't it? Yes. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Wonderful. I used to to have this uh, German prof. At St. Mary's, St. Mary's University in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Uh, what was his name? Nyabeki? Nerabeki? Something like that. Professor Nyabingi. <laughs> and gee, he was, he, was an old, he was an old guy then. He was, uh, I guess he was probably about 77, 78 or something. And this would have been 1985. So chances are he's probably not around anymore. And uh, anyway, he used to say, isn't it? the way you would say, I guess he just figured it was like Nespa, and he would say, you know, you're having trouble with your, with your writing your paper, isn't it? <laughs> isn't it? Oh, it's, it's a, or, so I mean, it's a nice day, isn't it? That works, but he would use it in all kinds of ways that it just didn't work at all, and I always found that very funny. Mm-hmm. And he was a very, very nice man, he was very friendly to me, and uh, so I hope that Whatever subsequent years went well for him, and uh, hopefully he's in a nice place somewhere now. Yeah. Yes. So, isn't it? <laughs> I hope he's in a nice place, isn't it? <laughs> okay. So, Canada Day, Canada and is Day? that the last date? That's the last date. And unfortunately, I, I guess that means that they won't be at Atlantic Fest 2006 in St. John's from the 10th to the 13th of August. Well, you know, we plug, should plug. Uh, definitely, if they were thinking about going further east, St. John's would be certainly be a, a place to come. I think we should give them a shout, and even if it's Atlantic Fest or not, I think we can probably line them up a gig. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Or a few gigs. Mm-hmm. So if you guys of the, of the Empire Feline are listening, uh, yo, uh, to you guys, hope you're good in the hood, and... Uh, if you guys want to come to this absolutely marvelous place, in fact, it's uh, it's kind of like the Tasmania of the Northern Hemisphere. 
Very, very similar. Any, anybody I've known who's ever been to Tasmania just can't believe how much like Newfoundlanders they are. So, uh, if you guys think you might like to uh, visit Newfoundland or the Republic of Avalon, get in touch with us and we will make it so. Make it so. It's interesting, the, uh, the publicity person for Canada for the group is named Jennifer Fritz. Okay. Why is that interesting? Fritz the cat. <laughs> I wonder if they thought of that. <laughs> That's very interesting. Uh, I don't know if it's just me that thinks about Fritz, Fritz the cat. But do you know who Fritz the cat is? I really don't huh? don't know very well, no. Who is Fritz the cat or who was it, Fritz the cat or what is Fritz well, the cat? I'm not sure if it still is, but it used to be a cartoon series like. Mm. Very nice. Yes. Anyway. Um, totally good. So, you, if anybody wants to check them out further, just go to... Here's the website. Here's the drum roll. TheCatEmpire.com Woohoo! TheCatEmpire.com And, uh, yes, indeed. That is it on The Cat Empire. A good bunch of folks playing very interesting... Blends of all kinds of music, I guess some Latin and some reggae and some, uh, I don't know. Bit of rap thrown in, I think, sort of. Uh, hip-hop, more hip-hop, hip-hop, hip-hop yeah. kind of stuff. Trip-hop, hip-hop sort of stuff. Yes, that's right. More so than rap. It's very interesting. If you get a chance, go out and see them from Vancouver to Halifax between now and the 1st of July. And next, we would like to talk a little bit about our... Adventures in Second Life, wouldn't we? Yes, yes, yes. We have gone over and and explored and had a look around, and uh, we've created quite an interesting character over there, who looks somewhat like me. Yeah, we we did some construction on the character the other night. Yeah, uh, got him fitted out with some duds. mm Mm-hmm. New shirt and pants it took us forever to, to figure out how to put it on. <laughs> yeah, that was that was a, an adventure in and of itself. Lillian kept putting the package on. <laughs> you had a, the the character had a packet like a shopping bag on his head for a long time. <laughs> yeah, but we got Correct. it sorted yeah. out. He's he's all dressed up. Yeah, and I did some uh, facial reconstruction so that he's looking more and more like Jim all the time. Yeah, he's just starting to look really like like some kind of class dude. Yeah. Yes. He's got uh, the. We put a hat on him and some sunglasses too. Yes. Yeah. And, and a, a, a goatee, uh, like a little beard. And a little mustache and on little the go. Mustache and, and a few freckles. And yeah. Blew up his lips a bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's all very nice. And his name for you, second lifers who might be listening, is Marley Wallengong. W O L L O N G O N G. So have a look for Marley Wallengong. In fact, we have a billboard on the uh, podcast island right next to the podcast awards billboard. Mm-hmm. Right next to it. To the right or to the left? To the right. Just to the right of the podcast awards billboard is the Republic of Avalon radio billboard. Mm-hmm. Loud and proud in Second Life. Yeah, and uh, we plan to do some other things over there as well. We're... Uh Looking at uh, having our having the Republic of Babylon radio podcast streaming over there, yeah, which would be nice. So we're in the process of figuring that out. Yes, indeed. So that that's all kinds of possibilities. This second life is is such an interesting thing uh, for you who don't know what it is. Well, how would you describe it? It's kind of like a virtual world uh, online. Uh, it's not it's not a game. So you're not going over there and just kind of, you know, shooting aliens or anything like that. You go over there and you actually, you're in a world. You're wherever you land. You're on an island somewhere and, you know, it's a certain time of the day and time passes and um, you can do all kinds of things there. You can build things and uh, uh, kind of link, you can create things from the real world and uh, kind of drag them into this second life world. And it's very, very interesting. It's very fascinating. And you can talk to people there. You can buy and sell things. You can just hang out um, and uh, listen to music, do whatever. All kinds of possibilities over there. So we're 
we're looking into it, you know, as we sort of like to keep, I guess, in tune with with what's going on kind of in the netosphere. And there's always interesting things, you know, cropping up. And uh, this is one of the, well, it's been on the go now for a few years, but uh, we, we were just checking it out now. I, and I think that's the case for a lot of other podcasters as well, just within the last month or so, checking out this Second Life thing. And it's very interesting. So if you are already acquainted with it, ch- check it out and look for Marley Wallengong. Otherwise, just go to secondlife.com and uh, it's very interesting. Mm-hmm. You can do a search for uh, Podcast Island <coughs> and uh, just pop over there and have have a look at some of the um, the other podcasters that are over there and maybe meet some some of those people, which is, has been great for us, too. Yeah. And there's a place in Second Life called Avalon. And mm. I, if it's a republic, which I imagine it is, I can't imagine it's, it's owned by some other country or whatever. Uh, so it must be the Republic of Avalon. So interesting with Republic of Avalon Radio. So we've been in touch with those people, and uh, I don't know, perhaps we may be able to collaborate. We may be able to help them out a little bit with some graphics and some uh, sound effects and music and things like that, because uh, it's great. And I think they're in the UK, so they're sort of just across the water from us here. So it would be interesting for uh, these people who have this Avalon place to hook up with some folks who actually live in the real world in a place called Avalon, the Avalon Peninsula. And hitch wagons, and you never know. Maybe three heads are better than (laughs) 2.4. Or whatever. (laughs) Anything else? Um, Oh, the birthday thing. Yeah, Jim had his birthday yesterday. Yes, I I had the big 666. Yes, and it went off without a hitch. (laughs) Ah. Maybe we had a hitch or two. We had a hitch or two didn't we? I think we did, yeah. yeah. So we didn't do anything. We recorded. We, we recorded a couple of little bits for you guys, and uh, just uh, of no substance ultimately. So we didn't bother to include it here for you. I just deleted all the files off the Edero. But later we will take you on a little walk downtown with uh, our new recording device, the much controversial uh, recording device. Uh, for which I attempted to share my uh, joy uh, to some, to the consternation of some. And, uh, oh well, what can you do? Uh, you get what you pay for, and uh, some things in life are free. Right? Yeah. But you can give that to the birds, birds and, and bees. bees. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I want money. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So uh, to those who felt perhaps uh, who, who might have heard the reviews that I did on the they're not even reviews they're just uh, looks at the Edderall. Uh if you feel that they were inadequate I would suggest you go back and listen to them again and understand the spirit in which uh, they were they were delivered and otherwise if you can't find it within your heart to accept gladly. Uh, that which was given to you freely and gladly, then uh, I think perhaps uh, you you might just need to take some uh, anger management courses or something, or smoke a pipe. <laughs> All right. Smoking pipe is good for the blood pressure. Yes, or, or <laughs> drink some drink some Tai Chi. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's Chai tea. Yeah, that's right. One time I was on tour and I got in a, I threw my back out in a hotel room. I got my uh, Chai tea in my Tai Chi mixed up. <laughs> Threw my back right out, I did. So, yeah. Um, we also, this week, uh, uh, are featuring for the first time Pedictionary, which for you people who don't know what that is, it is uh, a podcast, a daily podcast uh, for word lovers. And uh, what you hear each day is uh, the host, uh, Charles Hodgson, he researches a word and its origin and uh, lots of fasc- fascinating things about uh, all these different words that we take for granted. So why don't we just get to that right now? Mm, sounds good. All right, ladies and gentlemen, for the first time ever, and uh, we'd love to hear your feedback on this as well. So send us email at republicofavalonradio at gmail.com. Chat about it over in our forum 
uh, over at republicofavalonradio.com. That's the website. Whatever. We'd love to hear from you, and uh, I think this is a great little piece of uh, Republic of Avalon Radio, and hopefully this will help spread the word uh, about Charles and his show, his podcast, Pedictionary, as in pod dictionary, just with the one D, at pedictionary.com. But anyway, for the first time, here is Charles Hodgson and Pedictionary. You're listening to Republic of Avalon Radio. The Pedictionary word for today is toast. The roots of the word toast go back far enough that according to the American Heritage Dictionary, there are connections through Indo-European between toast and thirst, since they both relate to dry. Coming up through Latin, then French into English in the early 15th century, when toast first appeared in English, it seemed to mean something closer to what we would call croutons today, little dried morsels of bread that are often mixed with spices and, as ungodly as it may sound to my ear, added to wine or beer to, quote, improve the taste. So, for almost 400 years, these little chunks of brown bread floated around in people's glasses before they decided to use the word for them to apply to the little speeches they made while drinking. Why exactly would the word for little bread chunks transfer to speeches? The etymological sources point uniformly in one direction. Although no one seems able to do more than agree it's a fine story that might even be true. Once upon a time, a group were taking the waters at Bath. An admirer of one of the ladies dipped his glass in the water in which she bathed in order to drink her health. Another present disdained the drink, but, in reference to what had been floating in it, the girl, said he'd rather have the toast. In fact, Shakespeare talks of drinking a health, which is what a toast had been called before toast caught on. So at first, drinking a toast wasn't the speech, but the girl of whom the speech was in honor. The Oxford English Dictionary explains that in this case, the reference to the lady was supposed to indicate that it was her charms that lent flavor to the drink, as did the pieces of brown bread in earlier times. Today we use the word toast in other senses as well. Since the 1980s, something that was broken was toast. One source connects this with a browned circuit board, something that one of my old colleagues would have said has let the smoke out. From here, one imagines a logical progression of getting in trouble with the boss and saying, I'm toast. I checked Urban Dictionary and evidently, where carrying a gun was once called packing heat, a gun might now be called toast. Although Urban Dictionary isn't exactly an etymological authority, one author says that this is because bullet wounds burn. I would think a more logical progression would be that in one sense, someone who is toast is dead so that something that might make them toast could acquire the name. Please feel free to comment, email feedback at predictionary.com, look for Predictionary on Skype or dial 860-WORD-TIP for voicemail, or leave a comment on the blog page. For Republic of Avalon Radio, this is Charles Hodson. Ja, ist nein und nein ist ja. Ich weiß nicht, was richtig ist, weil ich bin nicht, was du bist. Alles klar. Well, 
they said that he came from a foreign land And his people were so low Oh, but when they would hear his music They would follow him wherever he Republic of Avalon Radio, you're with The Roar, I'm Jim Fiddler, and... I'm Lillian Fiddler. Indeed. And that was Charles Hodgson and Pedictionary, as well, the song you just heard was New Song of the Gypsy from my Friendly Fire CD, and that goes out to... That goes out to Lori Fiddler in California. In Los Angeles, California, Lori Fiddler, who uh, I guess is some sort of a cousin of mine from somewhere, somewhere back, and uh, we got an email from her, and it was great to hear from her. She bought some CDs over at uh, jimfiddler.com, and uh, that they've been dispatched? They've been dispatched, yes. When did you send them? Uh, yesterday, so that would be uh, on 06, the 06, 06, 06. And uh, she sent them, Lori, she sent them to you on 060606. So now we'll see how quick the post is in getting them to you, but uh, you can rest assured they are on the way. Yes. And it's very interesting to run into uh, a fellow fiddler out there. Um, any other fiddlers listening? Hello. Hello. Shoot us an email at republicofavalonradio at gmail.com and we will uh, get that fiddler thing going. Hey. Rock the fiddlers. Rock the fiddlers. Yes, absolutely. Fiddler Rock. 
She, I think、uh, Lori particularly liked that, the last song that we played here, the new song, The Gypsy. It, yeah.、Uh, kind of, she, I think she felt it kind of related to her family history, sort of. Well, interestingly enough, that's exactly what I wrote. That song is、uh, just a kind of a little, a little capsule、uh, of, of my family. That's,、uh, that's what, what it's all about. It's,、uh, it's an occupational name for one thing.、Uh, we've traced it back to, I think, the 1200s, something like that. And、uh, Ein Fiedler is、um, basically a person what,、uh, what don't have a job. Kind of, we, were, we, were, we were gypsies and、uh, played music and wandered around and, and all this sort of stuff. And.、Uh, Probably played a lot of klezmer music, I'd say.、Um, so that song is, is about that. And I also heard in the, in the family genealogy that、uh, in the 1500s, late 1500s, there was、uh, one of my forefathers who was very, very well known, very widely known around、uh, sort of what, what we, we would have called maybe Prussia at the time, and even into the British Isles, I think, and France. Alsace, Lorraine, and all points in between.、Uh, and he was just called the Blind Fiddler,、mm-hmm. which is very interesting. So I kind of imagined back、uh, for that song,、uh, I imagined kind of paying homage to him in a way, just going back and singling him out amongst all my sort of forebearers. So I just wrote that song. There once was a roving gypsy, and he came from o'er the plain. He played the finest fiddler, fiddle, so the fiddler was his name. They said that he came from a foreign land and his people were so low. But when they would hear his music, they would follow him wherever he'd go. So, in case anybody was wondering, I'm not、uh, getting all weird and writing a song about myself like that. That's actually about one of my forebearers.、Uh, and, of course, that was dedicated to fiddlers all over the world in the liner notes. I, I kind of dedicated it to my, to my dad. James Marley Fiddler, and to all fiddlers all over the world, didn't I? I think you did, yeah. Yeah. So,、uh, rest assured, fellow fiddlers,、uh, we are a bunch of gypsies. And if you listen carefully, the song of the first old gypsy can be heard to this very day.、Yeah. Indeed. That's a great song, I love that. Yay. And there's other things going on in there, too. There's even like、uh, bits of reggae you can hear in there. And, A little Celtic something happening and kind of a, kind of a, I guess a Jewish thing going on, a Middle Eastern sort of vibe. Definitely. I love the whistle in there. The whistles. Yes, I, I played two of them. Thank you. All by myself. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> no, I'm a Junzing. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? I'm a Junzing. So, okay.、Um, what about the,、uh, the other little thing we have to get to? We are going to. Lay some poetry on you folks. Yes, I think this is the first, is it?、Or、this is poetry's first on the roar, absolutely. And this is poetry by a local St. John's、uh, resident po- <laughs> person. Poet. Poet, yes. And、uh, her name's Mary Dalton. Yes. And、uh, I can just read a little. You just read a little, yes.、Okay. And you folks listen a little.、Oh, I have it right here. I, She I has don't it. I think I have it here, but I do. Of course you do. We are organized here. The Roar Studios are just basically teeming over with organization. <laughs> okay. <laughs> In fact, it's so organized that to, to, the, to the uninitiated, it might look、uh, quite a mess. I'll just、uh, briefly sort of. I think the, best, the thing that would sum it up is、uh, if I read just、uh, an excerpt from one of the reviews from her poetry. Sounds great, yeah. Probably、yep. sum it all up. Okay. I think maybe this one here from、uh, Stephen Burt from the, the Yale Review. Okay. She has a lot of reviews in her, and they're all really, really, really good reviews, but, you know.、Um, the Yale Review, that's, that's, that's a good one, I think, too.、Uh, so, I mean, you know, folks, we ain't fooling around with、uh, just any old poet here. No, for sure. No. This is Mary Dalton. Well known, remember the world, remember that name, folks. Yes. Okay, and he says, the best pure discovery, and in brackets, among the poets in the American anthology of contemporary Canadian poetry, the most original poet whom almost no U.S. readers will know. 
comes from perhaps the least urban locale. The place is Lakeview, Newfoundland. The poet Mary Dalton, whose spiky, dialect-strewn verse animates passionate fishermen, overworked wives, nearly pre-industrial hardships, and striking figures of speech. Wow. Yeah. So I think, uh, I think he likes it. I think he likes it. And uh, there's so many really, really great reviews here from like the Global Mail and um, all kinds of different newspapers. The Groping Mail? Groping Mail. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, anyway, I think, it's, uh, I think you'll be delighted. So the Global Mail finally actually had something nice to say about uh, somebody from Newfoundland? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Amazing. I'm just going to read it because it's very short. Okay. I think that was a really good one too. Okay. Lay it on us. These are fast poems. They slip by quickly, yet once gone, still hold hard to the ear and tongue. They're a mix of curse and blessing. The poems feathered as clean as newborn swallows as they dip and weave in the winsome cadences and idioms of Newfoundland. They are like something overheard in the street or at a table in a bar just after it opens, short as a joke and deep as a charm. These poems lift us from the obviously crafted intellectual poem to an art that echoes the best of William Butler Yeats' late poems, where he gave up artifice for the simplicity of joy and beauty. And that's from Patrick Lane, The Globe and Mail. Okay, very nice, yeah? So, I guess he likes it too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, why don't you just read uh, read a little bit from the jacket, just to give folks uh, a sense of what, what it's all about. This is by Mary Dalton on the back. It's her write-up uh, on the, the piece. Okay. One of the greatest of Newfoundland's glories is an oral culture which has produced a store of songs, riddles, rhymes, proverbs, and curses as rich as any to be found in the English-speaking world. The speech of Newfoundland, laced with image and metaphor, full of ripples and runs, close to hand and eye and mouth, is in its many varieties a treasure house of language. These poems seek to celebrate that vital store. The Dictionary of Newfoundland English, with its choir of voices, has been both an important influence and, in the case of the ten or so poems, a direct source. Most of the poems, however, have grown out of living speech filtered through memory and imagination. Interesting. Okay. Well, let's uh, get to it. This is some poetry. From Mary Dalton. Where is it available? Who, who's, uh, who's the publisher? The publisher is Rattling Books. Okay, so you can you can get Mary Dalton's poetry through Rattling Books. Do they have a website? Um, I think it's rattlingbooks.com. Okay. Yes, it is. That's R-A-T-T-L-I-N-G-B-O-O-K-S. Okay, rattlingbooks.com. You can go there for more information about Mary Dalton and her poetry. And... Uh, of course, this is this is available in a very nice package. It's a it's a CD, kind of in more of a like a DVD type case. Uh, very very nice. So uh, here is from Mary Begot, the poetry of Mary Dalton. <laughs> Gumption. It's clear he didn't have the sense God gave a kitten. And it was after all that he got intact with the other one, a real blatherskite, if ever I saw one, traipsing the beach all hours of the day or caterwauling away to the hens. Oh, she'd light up when she saw him, but in the kitchen with her nose in a book, she'd burn water in a pot. Bachelor Brothers. They never were a part of a crew. Kept to themselves under the hill. Kept up the peaked roof house. Set the small cabbage garden. No marriage. Stubbly beards. A raffish ramshackle walk. Mothers keeping their children in line. 
The boogeyman will get you if you don't be good. One deaf, or was he? When they cross my mind's eye, something of the terror of firms and four green fields comes upon me. Berry pails. Gad about those young ladios. The house in slings and the whole works of them are gone in back in on the runs. All the way into Skibbereen. I'll guarantee they'd better marley back here with berry pails blue to the brim, else there won't be a pick in the house this night of our Lord. And what they'll be after filling up on is a feed of tongues. Bride's Boys Sudden as a northeasterly, the engagement Up and down the harbour, the six of us Bidding the neighbours come to the wedding Now we come up with moonshine galore. Oh yes, more than we bargained for. My son, we all had a fine jag on. A racket out on the bridge. Up she went like a brindy bow. And the father, stiff as bruise, come out and drove us off out of it. And the water barrels upsot, the bride cake made away with. The day after, a big kick up. We were all mops and brooms. Small chance he'll have us in for a bite of the groaning cake come the fall.
Republic of Avalon Radio. You're with the Roar. I'm Jim Fiddler, and she's Lillian Fiddler. I am. Isn't she? <laughs> and uh, that was Mary Dalton, Newfoundland poet. And the piece of music you heard was In Through the Narrows from my Gypsy CD. I just thought that that would be a good bit of music after the wordsmithing of uh, Mary Dalton. Uh, both obviously rooted in Newfoundland, In Through the Narrows being about the uh, about St. John's Harbor, and I just sort of paint a picture with sound of uh, people, I guess, you know, coming into the Narrows when things were a bit rough on the North Atlantic over the centuries, and uh, coming in through St. John's Harbor would, would be a very, very nice feeling. You would be very glad to be getting in out of the uh, stormy weather and looking forward to stepping on the land and uh, the very welcoming, hospitable people in downtown St. John's and uh, maybe some pubs and all kinds of fun and frolics and all that stuff. So I figured that would be uh, very much in keeping with Mary Dalton's uh, poetry. And we very much hope you enjoyed this this music. <laughs> yes. So let's just uh, carry on uh, to take you home. We are going to take you out into downtown St. John's as we used to last year. Except this time it's with a new piece of recording equipment called the Ederal R9, made by our good friends at Roland. And uh, that's my console I use in my recording studio. Uh, I use a, a VS2480 which is also made by Roland. So we're rolling uh, on the river. <laughs> we're rolling uh, in the studio and in the field now as well. Very, very nice little machine. So let's just uh, take you along with us, hey? What do you figure? Oh, yeah, let's do it. All righty. <laughs> Alrighty, here we are, going out through the door, stepping out onto the step, closing the door, and we are now embarking upon our first for 2006 walk into downtown St. John's. Au pied, on foot. Well, I, I don't know how many other ways you can walk aside from on foot. And we are using the Ederal R09, which is a first. So I guess the thing to do, the interesting test, is to go back to last year and listen to us with the I River, and you guys can compare, can't they? Yes. Indeed, they can. Indeed. Hey. I think there will be a pleasant surprise. I think so. It's 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 amazing. It's just this little machine. Will we cut across the field? Sure. All right. I can see my breath. Yeah, really? <laughs> <laughs> wow. We're living in sort of an extra dimensional <laughs> world or something. What yeah. color is it? <laughs> it's kind of... <laughs> Whitey sort of grayish. <laughs> that doesn't maybe, sound healthy. <laughs> no, maybe you're a ghost. I was thinking earlier, and it was one of those thoughts that you... I had to sort of stop my mind from thinking about it. But uh, it was, what if recordings don't prove the fact that we exist? What if they actually prove the fact that we don't exist in the way that we think we do? In the sense that... There's the... Well, how can I explain this? Because it's, it's a nonsensical idea, really. It's kind of like quantum logic. <laughs> um, but, you know, there's the recording. And the recording itself kind of laughs in the face of the way we would think of, okay, how do we exist? Well, here we are. So, here we are, and that's all there is to it. I can see Frank, I can touch Frank, I can hear Frank. So there, Frank exists. But... We have a recording of Frank, a video and audio and tactile recording of Frank, then you can do all that and uh, all the things that would prove to you that Frank existed 
would be there. And uh, I know you can say that, well, those are only recordings of Frank, which verify that Frank existed, but uh, I don't know. Just an interesting little thing for you to... What the heck? Great. Hell's Angels. So we're walking through the park, we're walking through the grass, and there's a heavy sort of a dew on the, on the grass. I, I, went, <laughs> I have no idea. Gypsy is following us down through the park and oh here's the you go step hump step hump we're going down over these steps they're great big wide steps so I think I gave a full instructional uh, audio presentation last year on how to uh, navigate these steps uh, properly alrighty so we're down over the steps and we're coming out toward the street Stop looking at him. You keep looking at him and it's like you're beckoning him on. <laughs> I wonder how far he'll follow us. So anyway, that little that little uh, crazy idea that I threw at you, that whole business about... Uh, it's kind of a... I can't remember wh what it is or where I heard it, but there was some kind of uh, funny little quirky story about somebody who went to the lake where Narcissus used to go and uh, somehow uh, the lake had different thoughts about the whole situation so there you go ha! logic is in the mind of the beholder I'd say so yes indeed so soon we'll be down into the uh, traffic uh, area down where we will actually hear a bit of traffic and this is a Wednesday night what is it the 31st, 31st of May in fact the 1st of June is in less than two hours and uh, it's well chilly I must say Very chilly. I remember last year we were walking down there was one night well let's just go back and play a little excerpt from that I don't think I'll have much trouble finding it. Uh, so this is May 31st. Let's go back to sometime in late May, perhaps like the 29th of May. Right now it feels like all of about 40 degrees, about 5 degrees Celsius. Let's just uh, go back in time for one brief moment. To May 2005. Check this out. But this is podcast three for Republic of Avalon Radio. And we're getting some really great feedback, uh, which makes us very, very happy. We uh, like getting that the good feedback. There have been some interviews done. Uh, Republic of Avalon Radio is going to be the cover of the uh, TV guide all week. And uh, we've been on CBC Radio, and uh, it's just really, uh, really quite cool. by a park here, a beautiful park, uh, with daffodils and tulips all over the place, and uh, just absolutely gorgeous. This is really like the first day of summer for us. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it was, I don't know, probably about the 80s. I, yeah. saw, I actually saw 29.2 Celsius at one point, and tomorrow they're forecasting 28. Oh, wow. So, <laughs> so if, they, if they're saying, if they're fessing up to 28, oh, my gosh. I'd say up where we live in the West End of St. John's, and it's, uh, it's, a, it's always warmer than what they report on the, uh, on the weather. So I think we're in for a roaster tomorrow. Wow. Did you, did you close the back door and stuff? I did. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> Not a good time, though. 
<laughs> can remember that now. Huh? Um, so we're on our way to a meeting. We're going to Friday Malloy's. We're, we're having the uh, CD launch next Thursday night. And this is, as we walk along now, it's about, what, 7.30, quarter to 8? Mm -hmm. On uh, Thursday evening, the 2nd of June? 2nd of June. 2005. <laughs> All righty, we're back. So that's a little bit of a contrast, I think. Here we are with long sleeve pants and long sleeve pants, <laughs> whatever. And why is it why is it pants or why are it pants? I can't figure that out. Why are it pants? Why is they pants? What is being plural there? Is it the fact that it has two legs? You might say. Well, I don't think it could be just that, because why don't you wear a pair of shirts? Do you smell something burning? you smell that? Yeah, I do. It doesn't smell good, does it? No. It doesn't smell like somebody, you know, burning a log in their fire to keep them warm. It smells like uh, some sort of uh, plastic burning or something. Yeah, it's sort of an industrial burning, burning smell. Yeah. Like, you know, a fireside uh, campfire at the, at the DuPont's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't, don't, don't take a roasted weenie from one of the DuPont kids. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, uh, last year and this year lined up pretty much almost to the day, uh, according to the recording that you heard earlier. Uh... Quite a contrast. We're here with our long pants and uh, jackets, sort of windbreaker. You know these kind of those kind of jackets. Everybody knows that that sound. And I've got my 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 cap. Ayman is wearing my cap. I've got a t-shirt and two sweaters on inside my jacket. Really? Mm -hmm. Wowzers. <laughs> You must, you must, you must be like the the good year, uh, the good year Lillian. Yes. <laughs> yes, indeed. So, and yeah, I got my my cap. And uh, last year, that recording that you just heard a bit of, we were shorts, t-shirts, and sandals. Wow. Walking down. That was this time last year. It was indeed. And that's when we were talking about the Atlantic Fest and yes, the Irish and people coming and everything. And we were talking about the uh, CD launch coming up. Wow. Like the following week or oh, something. That's right, yeah. Remember? Yeah. Which was the 9th. Yeah. Maybe it was a little bit later than this. I you know not what? Much, though, you know what? No, it wasn't by it much, wasn't, but no. a few days. And I remember we said in that recording that that was the first. <laughs> what? <laughs> Watch where we're going. <laughs> We almost had a collision. Yes. Um, we did mention it in, during that recording that, that that weather had come completely out of the blue and it was the first day of summer, like. Yeah. That could happen any day here, you know. It could. Now, we've had very nice days. Yeah. But, but there's been a chill. There's a chill. There's a chill. There's a chill. Need to hail. <laughs> it depends on what what uh, where you, the wind's blowing. You you guys listen to Lil because there's a chill under the hill. You can go out in the morning and it's nice and warm. Well, yeah. The wind changes and the wind is always changing here. It is, yeah. So it blows really, me away. <laughs> it, it's like there's no set. Weather patterns for, <laughs> for uh, St. John's in particular. We don't know what it's going to be like here <laughs> from one hour to the next. Do we? Do you know that uh, I just found out recently that Newfoundland yes. has more video lottery, lottery gambling machines than any other province? In Canada, per capita. We got more everything per capita. <laughs> more beer. No We've beer. got more capita per capita. <laughs> we got more pubs. We drink bars. more beer. Yeah. We've got more pubs and. We got more weather too. Yes. We've got weather or not. We have many things. Yes. We have yes. more uh, 
probably more boats. Intellectual imbeciles. <laughs> more intellectual giants. More of anything good, bad, big, small, beautiful or ugly. In fact, Newfoundland we refer to as the herself. We refer to Newfoundland sometimes as though she were a wise old woman. And uh, we call her uh, the, a terrible beauty. As if you look at her rugged coastlines and so on, you would understand. <laughs> and all that. It's a beauty, all right. It's a beauty, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, indeed. Uh, so, we're going to get around to see more this summer. Hopefully. See more who? See more, see more Newfoundland, right? <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Really? I think, uh, I think, It'd yeah. It'd be brilliant. I think we should. It'd be brilliant. I think we should go to Millertown at the very least. Millertown? You always, this is this thing with Millertown. <laughs> Folks, Millertown is like, it's like going from here to uh, Timbuktu. And you, if you, in the winter you're taking your life in your hands because you got driving out over all these dangerous highways because they took away our, our railways so you can't get a train out there and uh, you're slipping around on icy roads with 18 wheelers packed full of radioactive materials zinging, zinging by you just avoiding head-on collisions and uh, in the summertime you go out there and the black f flies are the, size, are the size of dogs. No. Yes. When were, when were you out there in the summer? I've been out there in the summer lots of times. <laughs> right. I read about it one time in a book. <laughs> and the person who wrote the book and the person who wrote the book was out there thousands of times. <laughs> he knew. Well, it's the warmest place on the island. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's too hot. <laughs> And it's on Red Indian Lake. It's hot enough to boil the monkey's bum out there. So this is where the Biafic Indians see. Used it's to an erasi It's a racial. Time. It's a racist name too. What? Red Indian Lake. <laughs> kind of is, I guess. Well, I mean, you know. Well, you know what they call it, Red Indian, because they used to wear ochre, red ochre on their faces to protect them from the sun. Yeah, Red Indian Lake. Oh, okay. Well, how about? Uh, <laughs> What about we just call Windsor Lake? We'll change the name from Windsor Lake. That's where we get our drink of wa drinking water from, by the way. Lillian goes out every morning with a bucket. And <laughs> Why don't we just call it like White Honky Lake or something like that? <laughs> huh? Honky. White Honky Lake. It's the funniest thing. Uh, well, it would have been more appropriate probably to call it Beothic Lake or something like that. You think? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> listen, <laughs> listen. I, 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 I have native heritage, very direct native heritage, Cherokee heritage. And there's this whole business with naming everything after native peoples. Everything from ball teams to rivers and uh, even automobiles. Naming automobiles after people is a strange, strange habit. And it doesn't happen. You don't go you, you don't go out and get the 2006 Honda Honky. You know, it just doesn't happen. Or the, the Nissan Negro. Or it just doesn't happen. So what's with, uh, what's with all these uh, automobiles named after Native North American people? Well, I, guess I don't get of, it. it. Well, I uh, in a way, it's kind of sad because we basically killed off all of the Indians here. Who's we? Well, not me and you, but you know. Like <laughs> no, but I the mean. The people who are here. Don't you think some of my people were killed off by well, these yeah. we that you keep talking about? Yes, absolutely, I do. Well, what's your point? My point is that then, you know, after things are killed off, then you feel kind of like warm and fuzzy about naming a, mm. a lake or a road or something. Mm, after white these. woman sound confused. <laughs> I'm part Indian as well. You come from India? No. Well, what's your point? How can you be part Indian? I'm part Chinese, okay? Let's just decide all of a sudden that everybody that lives west of uh, Land's End in England, let's just call them all Chinese people. So. Well, yes, it is 
interesting. So I, I'm, I guess I'm Chinese now all of a sudden. Why do, you, why do you think they call them Indians here? Like, why do you think they call Greenland North Greenland? America? It was all a big lie. It was propaganda. It was a hoopla to fool people into having false uh, ideas about places and investing money and giving guys, oh, okay. giving guys money oh. to get on boats and have great raping and pillaging and plundering adventures and lots of uh, hitting women overhead with heads with sticks and grabbing huge chests of gold and because they thought they were going to this like rich yeah they thought they were going to India they were going to find a, a, a passage to well, India I mean why didn't they change so they came back and said yeah we found the Indians why didn't they kind of change that after like became kind of the secret was out <laughs> I don't know <laughs> either kind of weird I figure, though, either they're with us or they're with the terrorists. That's the way I look at it. Who? Whoever they are. The Toyota Honkies. <laughs> a new 2006. What did I say? A new 2006 Nissan Negro. I just don't think you're going to buy that vehicle. They're not going to sell that vehicle. I figured out something. Uh, somebody who lives in Barbados not just as somebody who just wants to kind of be an outsider and you know do the outsider thing not get to know anything about the culture, the history, the music the people but somebody who just wants to you know with their whole heart and soul come from wherever they come, come from knowing who they are and pitch that in to the collective till in Barbados. I figure those people, the good ones, we could call them BBCs. Bar uh, Bajans by choice. Mm -hmm. We have that term here, NBCs. We call people good people who come, f come here from abroad. I guess we all come <laughs> from abroad <laughs> originally. <Yeah. laughs> Yeah, so yeah, yeah, you thought of that too, didn't you? Yes, I did. <coughs> you terrible oh, person. Boy. It's happening to me. Don't call them chicks broads, hate that. <laughs> okay, all right, let's be good. Um, yeah, so we have that term, NBC, Newfoundlander by choice. So uh, perhaps Bajans could compliment the people who thought enough of Barbados and the people the Bajan people to make it their home I mean their true home not just a, a place to go and you know get served pina coladas and be arrogant and so on uh, yeah you can compliment them by calling them BBC's Bajans by choice and I, oops. I think I tend to think that would that would go over quite well I think it would too. Yeah. And uh, we have the whole uh, time thing on the go with Barbados too, like Newfoundland time and Barbados time. Yeah, they're not the same. No, they're not the same, but they're somewhat similar. No, what I mean yeah. is like um, people oh, in Barbados say... <laughs> uh, Bajan time. Yeah, like uh, we'll meet at 2 o'clock and the other person don't, will say, don't, not, don't, not Bajan time. Not please. Bajan time, yeah. <laughs> We're kind of like that here. So we are, yeah. But same. you know what? Pretty much anyone in the world is like that except for the people that are running around in the western world I guess yeah kind of trying to sell their soul for a dollar yeah running around nothing worse than that trying to sell your soul especially when you think you might be able to get a buck fifty for it <laughs> see that's the worst part the soul is worth a lot more than a dollar it is yeah. I think so absolutely she is <laughs> and even you know if you don't think maybe you can get premium price for it, then wait around and watch the currency exchange. And it's, yeah, like pounds, uh, selling pounds. <laughs> yeah, sell your soul by the pound. <laughs> hey, did you know that when you die, you lose something like, uh, how much is it? Um, 22, what is it? 22 20, uh, inches? No. Uh, feet. No, point, is but, it? My grandmother once told me when, they, when we were first converting to uh, uh, met the metric system in the 70s, she, once, uh, she was trying to get it all straight. She told me 
that we're supposed to have 20 kilometers of snow. <laughs> I was like, Ooh. oh no! <laughs> Run for the hills. What is it, like 2.2 ounces or something like that? Yeah, it's something like that. I can't remember exactly. That's an interesting thing to Google. Uh, I don't know how you, what you would do the search for, but yeah, apparently they've uh, done extensive testing and when you die, you just automatically, I mean, no, nothing changes. Uh, just from the, the instant before you kind of shuff off this mortal coil to the instant directly thereafter, you, uh, hey, that ain't pop safe music. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> yeah, there you go. When he walks down the street, <laughs> he smiles at everyone. Today the, the courier guy came to the door. Uh-huh. And uh, you opened the door and he said, how are you, Jim? <laughs> this is like the, you know, not the regular courier, because we don't get couriers very often. Uh-huh. From Montreal. He wasn't from Montreal, but, you know, this is FedEx or something like that. Uh-huh. And they know, and they know. get FedEx that often. No. And they know me. Yeah. <laughs> I'd have a hard time going underground, I guess. I think you would, yeah. You'd probably see people down there, you know. Well, geez, that would be a revelation, wouldn't it? <laughs> I could see, I could see. <laughs> or, yeah. Darling, I see people. <laughs> I see live people. <laughs> hmm. Fascinating. We have a nice aroma downtown this evening. Oh, yeah. Very pleasant aroma. Smells to me like, uh, let's see. <laughs> Mexican? No. Chili? No? Chili? I'm just trying to figure out what they all ate. <laughs> <coughs> Ode to Harbor. The Harbor, yes. Oh, Ode to Harbor. Yep. So anyway, it is great to be back in the saddle. Or out of the saddle, I should say. And I'm none the worse for wear. We're getting very close to our destination. Your breathing seems fine. Yeah, uh, yes. Uh, Your would, heart you rate's okay? would you like to check my pulse? I think I still I have one. Huh? I can feel it on my arm. Really? Pulse, Not pulse, really. Pulse, pulse. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah, none the worse for wear. Great to be back out into the, uh, into the walking again. And uh, very, very, very nice to have the Ederal. And I hope you guys appreciate the audio quality that we're able to offer you with this uh, new purchase of ours. Hope it's pleasing to the ear. And there's just something about walking down the street that uh, is not the same for me when I'm back in the uh, studio, sitting there at the microphone, you know, kind of all mellowed out and all that kind of thing. It's just, uh, just a little more energy. Yeah. And you're walking down the street, you know, and you've you got the adrenaline going. And yeah. It just kind of pumps the conversation along. It sure does. Yeah. You never know what woman might come up as a topic, right? One never knows. <laughs> you never know who you're going to meet or... This is true. What kind of music you're going to hear. Exactly. Ron Hines is playing at the Rose. Oh, no. no really? Yes. Ron Hines at the Rose. Yeah. Impossible. <laughs> it's true. It's don't, true. Be, don't be absurd. <laughs> I'm Alrighty. not being absurd. There's all kinds of people out tonight. Yeah. You'd swear it was like summer or something. Well, it's like Wednesday night, and uh, yeah. what's up with that? Who's up there? There's a, like over there? Yeah. We have a, actually. Don't a, point. A table outside and chairs. It's ignorant to point. That's incredible. Ch tables and chairs. Yeah, out on the sidewalk. Wow. Now, what's with that? I don't know. Something funky going on there, I think. Yes. Mm hmm. Something funky. It's probably for the tourists. Laura, Laura, Laura. <laughs> we have tourists here now, for sure. The Department of Tour Lourism. Yeah. I saw a gang of people back there with uh, jackets on that said Ontario on the back. <laughs> People travel in gangs. Are they like a gaggle of geese, a giggle of girls? <laughs> so they don't get lost. <laughs> All right. Then. Okay, we're almost at our destination. 
we's almost there. We're so close, I can almost taste Smithers. <laughs> what do you think of that? Yeah. Ah, You're gonna be okay? Yeah, I just uh, went to do up my zipper and cut my uh, chin in the zipper. Zipper chin. Okay, folks, so that ends uh, excursion number one. 2006 with the Ederal R09 and we will catch you later on. Maestro, cue up the jingle. Catch you on the other side. See you. Here comes the jingle. <laughs> Republic of Babylon Radio. Either you're with us or you're with the terrorists. You're with the road. Republic of Avalon Radio. You're with the Roar. I'm Jim Fiddler, and that's it for this episode of Republic of Avalon Radio. A big thanks to everybody who sent email wishing uh, me birthday wishes. Much, much appreciated, and uh, very nice to know that you're thought of. And a big thanks to uh, Anne Tanaglia and her class for getting in touch with me and uh, doing a little absolutely cool uh little birthday thing for me they kind of uh, did a little little chanty thing and a little bit of singing and all that kind of stuff and it was it was absolutely great so a great big hello to all you guys and girls and thanks for doing that for me and uh we will catch you next time now that we have the edderal and uh, we we're back in the saddle we're back outdoors again and the weather's warmed up and all that uh, we're very much looking forward to a summer of all kinds of stuff to to bring to you. And don't forget about Atlantic Fest 2006 in St. John's, the 10th to the 13th of August. All are welcome. If you're just a, a punter, as we'd say, uh, somebody who just likes to check it out for the music and uh, and the, the, the fun and the activity, that's great. Uh, let us know. Get in touch with us. Send us email at republicofavalonradio at gmail.com. Go to our website at republicofavalonradio.com. Uh, but get in touch with us if you're just, as I say, a punter or if you're a performer. Uh, we still don't have all the slots full. So if you think you might just like to come here and uh, hang out with us for a week and make some music and have some fun, uh, get in touch with us. Let us know. And that's if you're, if you're a performer or if you just want to come for the fun. Either way, let us know. And for now, take care of each other, and we will catch you next time, right here on Republic of Avalon Radio. Seller Production.